Hi, it's Carrie. Are you ready to critically appraise systematic review methods with me? It's time. So I'm going to search for systematic review subset in PubMed, and we'll be looking at the methods today. Remember that when I'm looking at systematic review methods, I'm really interested in the Prisma for Searching extension, which can be found on the Prisma website and has 16 items and if someone is publishing a systematic review let's say post 2020 which is about when this came out then they really should be using some sort of reporting standard ideally the prisma and ideally the prisma search extension among some of the other extensions that you can find here in the extension page so I'm just going to leave that there, put some links in the video description for you to take a look for yourself. And they are sorted by most recent. And as I've said before, I'm not going to critically appraise the work of other librarians or people I know. So I'll just mention that I don't know the people on this review and we'll look at number one. And I like to see where they're from. Spain, Brazil, Portugal. And we'll never trust just the abstract, but it's a nice looking abstract. It's broken up into structured parts that give us a pretty good idea of what they might have done. And let's look at the article itself and see if we have access. We'll make this a little bit bigger, not that big. And we'll scroll down until we get to the methods. So here we have the methods. This systematic review and meta-analysis were prospectively registered on Prospero. That's the place where you can register your protocol and followed the reporting guidelines of the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews in meta-analyses, in exercise, rehabilitation, sport medicine, and sport science. And actually, I'm familiar with a statement that's been made on the Prisma in this field, so I googled it earlier, and we'll see that there is something called the persist, and it's just talking about the prisma in the context of sports medicine. So that could be really useful to you if you work in that field. And they also say, as well as the recommendations from the Cochrane collaboration, that's great. Remember that the Cochrane Handbook for Systematic Reviews of Interventions etc. is not just for people doing Cochrane reviews, it's really seen as a best practice document for anybody conducting a systematic review. They give us the PICO question, women with dyspareunia, intervention, physical therapy techniques, that could be a lot of different things, control, pharmacological treatment, psychobehavioral interventions or non-intervention, outcome, the intensity of pain, during sex and strength and elasticity of the perineal muscles, S, study designs, experimental studies, quasi-experimental and clinical trials. Okay, then they say a systematic search of publications was conducted in May 2023. Always like to see a date, an actual day, when the searches were run that makes it truly reproducible. Following, in the following databases, Scopus, Medline, PubMed. PubMed contains Medline, so I'm assuming that they searched Medline on an additional platform. CINAHL and Web of Science. Web of Science is a platform for many different databases depending on your institution. The search strategy involved various combinations of the medical subject headings, dyspareunia, sexual dysfunctions, pelvic floor, physical therapy modalities, the search strategy aligned with the PICOS question is presented in table one. And that's all we have here in the narrative about the search. Let's look at the table. And I'll say there's a couple things here that I would recommend. I think they would have really benefited from the input of an expert searcher. They've conducted five different searches in each database. I think an expert searcher would really recommend to combine those five searches into one because we see there's a lot of duplication here for dyspareunia and rehab, dyspareunia and physical therapy, dyspareunia and manual therapy. Well, you could have had one search that said dyspareunia and rehab or physical therapy or manual therapy, etc. And then they've only used women, and I would strongly 
recommend against just using women. If you're going to build a search concept for women, it needs to include female, females, and woman. So I'm really happy that they included the search strategies for each of these databases or platforms, but they're not super comprehensive. Also remember that in the narrative they said, Scopus, Medline, PubMed, Sinal, and Web of Science. But that's not what we see here. We see PubMed, Science Direct, Sinal, Web of Science, and Scopus. So instead of Medline, they've replaced it with Science Direct, which again is a platform that has many different pieces of content, depending on your research institution. Another thing I noticed is that in PubMed, they've only used Dyspareunia, the medical subject heading, and they haven't used any Dyspareunia keywords which means they've limited their search to only articles that have been indexed for Medline and they've missed a whole lot of literature. I think it's great that they included the search. I mean, these are pretty reproducible. We could put this in PubMed and we would get results or not. This means manual therapy is not a mesh term. And so it didn't read it. And so we got zero results. Interesting. So a little bit of investigative process tells me that these may not have been the searches that they used. So manual therapy maps to musculoskeletal manipulations. And you know that it maps because manual therapy is listed here in the entry terms. But this is the actual subject heading. So they missed that. So I could keep commenting on that, but just to kind of show you, they look reproducible when I went to PubMed to try to reproduce it. Didn't really work. Um, that's something to be aware of when you're looking at systematic reviews or writing and publishing one. Let's go look at a second one today. The next one we're going to look at is number five. I looked at some of these other ones and either I don't have access or a librarian was involved. So let's look at number five, pharmacy education in traditional and complementary medicines. They've named it a systematic review. I don't specifically see a librarian. And let's look at this nice structured abstract. Eligible studies published between January 1st, 2016 and February 28th, 2023. So they've made a date limit. We're identified across six databases, PubMed, Scopus, Web of Science, Embase, Science Direct, and Medline. Data were extracted from included studies and categorized into key themes and sub-themes and reported descriptively. Uh, no comment. Okay, so I had to go through my university to get access to this. And I'm going to go down here past the abstract and the introduction and let's take a look at the methods. The search strategy was informed by the author's earlier reviews related to pharmacists and T and CMs. I forgot what that is already. The literature search was conducted according to a review protocol registered with Prospero. Okay, this would be really interesting to look at. They've They've defined their search criteria apparently already in their protocol, which is something you're supposed to do. And they've registered it in Prospero. And then this makes me really happy and reported in accordance with the Prisma 2020 statement, 27 item checklist. So that's really good because that's exactly what Prisma is for. It's for reporting, not conducting, not performing. The search was conducted across six databases, PubMed, Scopus, Web of Science, Embase, Science Direct, and Medline. I'll just note that both Science Direct and Web of Science are platforms for databases that you may or may not have through your institution. So everybody's subscriptions are going to be different and we'd prefer that you name the actual databases and not just the platforms. In Web of Science Advanced Search, you can see what you're searching and in Science Direct, I don't think you can even do very complex searching at all. The other thing I'll note here is that Medline is a major component of PubMed. So if you're searching PubMed, you are also searching Medline. This tells me they may have searched Medline on an additional platform. 
They looked for five years. They have an appendix. This time, okay, they've given a rationale for the time frame. The time was selected to capture literature reflecting contemporary pharmacy education. And a previous review had included literature from 2010 to 2015. As such, this review period would allow some comparisons between time periods. Two primary search terms were pharmacist. They've truncated it so it would capture pharmacist or pharmacists. Pharmacy or pharmaceutical care and products of traditional and complementary medicine. Well, that's a doozy of a phrase. I'm afraid it's not going to get you very much. And if we put it in PubMed here, just using my PubMed that I already had open. Oh, I forgot a quote. It had a quote around it. It's going to get you uh, some weird results because it's probably mapping. If we go into the advanced search, and we look at the search details. Yeah, it's mapped to uh, whew, economics. Um, complementary therapies. Yeah, it's just not an ideal search term phrase because it's mapping. It's breaking up and mapping to other things because it doesn't really know what you want. Okay, let's go back. So they've used uh, traditional medicine. And how was this combined? Are they naming this concept? Is there an and or an or here? I don't know. Traditional medicine or complementary medicine or integrative medicine or alternative medicine or dietary supplement or natural health product, herbal medicine, nutraceutical or homeopathic. Um, I would probably truncate it homeopath. Then you can get homeopathy, etc. Mesh terms and related keywords were used to form a comprehensive search strategy. Terms within pharmacist and products of traditional and complementary medicine were combined with or. Okay, that tells us a little bit more. And the results from each primary database, from each primary search term were combined with and. To identify eligible articles, the citations were first screened for inclusion by two researchers. Good, that's the best practice. Two researchers to screen. Not to search, but to screen. The reference lists of included articles were also assessed for further articles which met the inclusion criteria so they've met a lot of these prisma items here they've they've talked about um well they've at least given us some database names some platform names they talked about citation searching now let's look at that appendix okay okay they have a uh, number of hits by line does this really link out to PubMed? I wouldn't, I would be so surprised, but it does. Um, that's amazing. Okay, uh, they've searched pharmacist as a mesh term, pharmacy, pharmacies, and pharmaceutical services. And then they've searched some keywords related to that and combined them all. Then they've searched the things we've talked about already as medical subject heading terms and combined them all. Okay, and the limits, and they got 1,034. So I'm not gonna rerun it. Oh, they did truncate it homeopath, homeopath. Uh, they've given us their Scopus search, which looks pretty close to the PubMed search, although I see some duplication here. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. I'd have to run it to understand. Web of Science doesn't look really the same as the PubMed search. They didn't truncate homeo homeopath at the H, so they, it, it's been more specific. Science Direct, um, I didn't even know you could search like this in Science Direct. I don't really use Science Direct. And Embase. Um, I'd be curious to see if these were really entry terms. It's the implication is is that they are. And then .mp means it's a keyword. It's a multi-purpose field. One thing I would note is that systematic searches are really supposed to be the same across each platform or database. And so what we were given in the first search in PubMed doesn't always match with what we see later on. So they're either more simple or more complex. Uh, yeah. And then Medline, 
I'm guessing they searched Medline on the EBSCO platform because this is EBSCO syntax. So they're searching in the abstract only. So I will say good job for including the searches here, search strategies in the appendix. And that I think they did a pretty nice job of reporting, uh, but also would have benefited from an expert searcher to make the searches more equivalent across each platform. I hope you'll join me for another appraisal.